The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it casts. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Cause you take good care. church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. This is our third time trying to record this one sermon. So if this doesn't tell you how powerful this is about to be, um, I don't I don't know what should witness more than that. The enemy wants to stop you from hearing this message because Testimony Tuesday is going to be so powerful. We're going to talk about some revelation today that will absolutely change your life. So what we want to do is we want to pray And then we're going to get right into this lesson. But before I jump into the lesson, I want to just make a a, a reminder real fast. We did have our BSM discipleship curriculum last night, and we do have our divine purpose curriculum tonight. So if you're a part of any of our discipleship curriculums, we're coming up on the end of the semester. We're a couple weeks away. And then that means we're only a couple weeks away from entering into the second half of the year in quarter number three. So if you're a part of any of our discipleship curriculums, please make sure you are caught up and please make sure that you are uh, looking ahead at what you want to take next. You know, if you're in our BSM discipleship curriculum, do you want to take the advanced curriculum, divine purpose, end times? There's so many other curriculums to take. I want to make sure that you are prepared to go online, buy your curriculum and get ready uh, for the second half of the year. It's going to be a powerful second half of the year. So I'm going to pray, and then we're just going to jump right into this lesson today. Like I said, this is my third time trying to get this recorded. So if if it doesn't tell you how powerful this is, I don't don't know what is. So let's let's pray, and let's jump right into it. So Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your Son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion. Transforming us by the renewing of our mind. Conforming us to the image of Christ. Growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, go with me to 1 Kings 17. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. 
So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering the sticks. And he called her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a curse. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, and go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. And bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the curse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the curse of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. Now, I want to go over just a couple things real fast, and then we're going to talk about some testimonies. The first thing I want to talk about is the fact that yesterday the Spirit of God impressed upon me as I was teaching to have Testimony Tuesday. Because yesterday we went through a lesson called Respect of Persons. No respect of persons. Based off the lesson in Acts 10.34 where Peter declares God is no respecter of persons. And then tomorrow we're going to talk about an overview of 1 Kings 17. And then the next day we're going to talk about sowing for needs. Or actually the truth behind sowing for needs. Because there's a big misunderstanding in the body of Christ today when it comes to how you sow seed and what you sow seed for and the purpose of sowing seed. So we're going to talk about that all tomorrow. Now... One thing I do want to mention today is the fact that this whole understanding of God is no respecter of persons, that phrase is only used one time in the Bible in Acts 10.34. It's the very first part of the gospel preached by Peter to Gentiles. So the very first thing the Gentiles hear about the gospel of the Lord Jesus is the fact that God is no respecter of persons. And that is very important because that word in the Greek is no it's not used anywhere else in the Bible no other place in the Bible do you see that word come to come up you might say well why is that important because the only person that I have found historically to have used that word is the Archbishop under Constantinople which I believe is like three four hundred AD and the reason why he used that word is he came against the abuse of power in the church And the abuse of power comes from a people that says, well, God will do it for me and you have to come to me to receive. And, you know, God won't do it for you. He only does it for me because of who I am. It's an overstep and it's an abuse of power. And the archbishop came directly against that. And so do we because the truth of the Bible is the fact that if God will do it for me, God will do it for you. There's no respect of persons with God. But Jesus is a righteous judge. And as a righteous judge, he judges righteous judgment according to the inward parts, not according to the outward appearance. Male, female, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, you know, 15 or 50, it doesn't matter the outward appearance. What matters is the spirit of obedience inside of you to receive the abundant provision of God. And that's what it's all about. So we had this conversation yesterday that laid the foundation for the testimonies I'm going to give today. I'm not giving you testimonies because this is what God does for me and it's not going to happen for you. No, I give you testimonies to understand that if God would do it for me, God will do it for you. The fact that God did it in the life of Elijah and God does it in my life. The fact that God did it in the life of Paul and God does it in my life. The fact that God did it in the life of Peter and God will do it in my life and has done it in my life God will do it for you you can look at passages in the Bible and see God's supernatural sustainment and the provision of God and the power of God and the movement of the Spirit and God will do it in your life if you walk in a spirit of obedience it's a very powerful truth the other part that we want to talk about is what happened last week we we had a test we had a revelation come forth I, i don't think i've ever taught it in that way before last week but in partnership benefits i believe it's part number five and part number six we talked about the church of corinth 
Now the church of Corinth, or where the epistles of 1st and 2nd Corinthians comes from, Paul wrote to the Corinthians, wrote to the church at Corinth, and we receive one of the greatest revelations when it comes to giving. So bountifully reap bountifully, so sparingly reap sparingly. God ministers seed to the sower, and all of the point, the whole reason for all of it, God blessing me, God blessing you, abundance, all of it is for thanksgiving to God. We've talked about it so many times. We've used those verses. When it comes to receiving the offering on Sunday, it's a part of our kingdom finance lesson and our BSM discipleship curriculum. Just so many powerful truths. But what we're going to talk about in two days, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so I'm, I'm going to leave that there. Just You're going to have to come back in two days if you want to hear more about it. But the thing I do want to mention is that before that teaching comes forth, Paul talks about the fact that when he went to Macedonia, he testified of the church of Corinth in Macedonia. So you'd have to go into the book of Acts to realize that when the Spirit of God led the Apostle Paul into Macedonia, he led him to Philippi. Philippi is in Macedonia. You might say, well, why does that matter? Because the epistle of Philippians was wrote to the church of Philippi in Macedonia that Paul talked about in the epistle of Corinth, uh, 2 Corinthians. So it all ties together. And the point being that when Paul wrote to the Philippians, he said, from the very first day you partnered with me, from the very first day you partnered, the greatest truths of the sustainment of God, God supplies all my need, all of those truths are referenced to a church that's partnered with them, the church of Philippi. But they did this because of what Paul preached when he went there. What Paul preached when he went there was not just the gospel, but the understanding of partnership because of the Corinthian church. And the Corinthian church, Paul said, you've done this. I'm going to send some people ahead of me to make sure you're still doing this because I've already went about telling people of what you're doing. And it's causing other people to enter in. So when you testify about people's partnership, people's giving, the supernatural sustainment and abundance of God, when I share these testimonies I'm about to share with you, there's things that I receive supernaturally from God. And there are things that I receive in partnership. The reason why these testimonies are so powerful, one, if God will do it for me, God will do it for you. So you know that this can happen in your life. But also, when I testify of these things, I want to stir your spirit on the inside of you for you to partner also. Because if other people will do this and you will do this, then you will enter into the blessing that's upon their life. So let me share some testimonies for just a little bit. We're going to talk about the overview tomorrow. We're talking about sowing for needs the day after that. We just got so many powerful things that the Spirit of God is wanting to talk about. But today I'm going to focus on testimonies. I don't know how many I'm going to be able to share because I've got a, I've got a lot of them when it comes to this subject. But let's start uh, with my original testimony of how I ended up in Chicago. I was called by God when I was... 18 years old into the ministry. At 20 years old, God was speaking to me and told me my purpose in life was to see the city of Chicago saved in Jesus' name. That's when my, that's when my purpose was spoken to me directly from God, confirmed by four elders. It's exactly what I knew my purpose in life was. At the end of that year, I was in Kansas City, pastoring at a church. The very next year in uh, 2021, or not 2021, when I was 21, I ended up getting a divorce and moving back home to Tennessee. At that moment, God spoke to me to move to Chicago, but I didn't make the move. I didn't make the move because all I had was $2,000. I didn't think I had the ability to move. Now, I didn't know the truths of 1 Kings 17. I didn't learn these till later, and this is why this is so important. And so I backslid from God for five years. And then when God re, he reconciled me, restored me, redeemed me, brought me to Chicago when we established Blank Slate Ministries. We've been here since uh, January of 2022. God spoke to me in December of 2021. But when God brought me to Chicago, he brought me with the understanding of 1 Kings 17. 
that the provision of God is where God told you to be. Now, when God moved me here, and when I came here, I had money. I always, I'm very straightforward about this. I didn't move with nothing. I moved with quite a bit. You know, I had over $100,000 in the bank. If, if I'm honest, it was like 130 or something like that, $120,000 when I moved here. And then when I was here, the very first miracle of provision I saw was the selling of my house, my house that I had in Tennessee. Now I had only owned the house or I had only lived in the house about two months. And then selling the house, it was, you know, it was more of like, can I get my money back out of it? I was, you know, we were trying to make sure I could, you know, pull some of my money that I used in down payment. But then my real estate agent said, I think it could do this much, you know, and I decided right then to believe God for abundance. I decided to stand and believe God that supernaturally he would provide financially. And that house, which should have never brought it in the natural, made almost $60,000 a profit. It was, it was nothing short of a miracle. And the very first thing I did is I sowed seed off of that. I paid a tithe and then I started giving. And throughout the first eight months of me being in Chicago, using the money to sustain me and the money that I had plus the money I made on the house and the sustainment, you know, I paid rent, paid bills, and then I gave a lot of the money away. On paper, we gave over $50,000 away. In the natural, if you saw what all we gave, we gave over $100,000 away. So we gave a lot of money away in that first eight and a half months. And the ministry itself received almost no money. When I say almost none, I think in the first year alone, we only received about $2,000. We were barely receiving seed money at all. So nothing was coming in, but we were giving and sowing as much as we possibly could. But then I ran out of money. And it's the very first time that I was in a position where I had to trust God financially. Because I didn't really have to trust the first eight and a half months because I had money. But then I was in a position where I had none and none was coming in. So it was God or nothing. And we hit a breaking point. But then the supernatural sustainment of God kicked in. Wisdom came forth. And we had the first seed. The first, the first miracle of provision show up. God gave me wisdom and $16,000 came in. We, 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 we made a move that God moved in my life. I could tell the whole story, but I'm trying to go through this a little fast. $16,000 showed up. Months go by, the money runs out again. Am I gonna stand and trust God financially? Well, then seed money shows up. My rent gets paid. Next month, rent gets paid. Next month, rent gets paid. And over and over and over, we see God month by month start to sustain me supernaturally. The, the truths of 1 Kings 17 started to become evident in my life. And then I'm, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because there's really two main testimonies, or three main testimonies I want to talk about today. The first one is what happened when I was moving apartments. Now, I've given this testimony before, but I want to do it again. It's right after we started teaching the series on provision and obedience. I had to move apartments and I had no money. And so I decided to start trusting God financially. You know, I've been trusting God financially, but I was trusting God for him to open a door. At one week out from moving, I had $30 in the bank. And then somebody gave $500. Somebody partnered, gave us $500. Long story short, we gave 400 of it away. We sowed that seed. Not because I was trying to get God to do it, it's just I, was, I knew God was gonna take care of me, so that money was not gonna supply the need that I had. So I just wanted to keep sowing. I wanted to keep giving. And then I vowed a vow, we've given this testimony in detail before, so I'm just skimming over it today. But three days later, $2,000 shows up. I give half of it away. Three days after that, God moves on somebody and $5,000 shows up. Nothing short of a miracle. God opens the door and I walk into my new apartment. It was nothing short of a miracle, that whole testimony. Money just coming exactly when it was needed. The next month, same thing. Next month, same thing. Next month, same thing. Nothing short of miraculous. Every single time the seed was needed. I had rent money due one time, and, and, and a person who partners with this church is probably watching this right now. 
decided to pray outside of telling me decided to pray and seek God for the money that I needed because if they would receive they would give and later on that week they received and then my seed the thing that I needed I wasn't telling anybody about my need but God supernaturally brought it through me through one of my partners there's somebody that gives into the ministry and then it happens again and then the one I really want to testify about, the one that seems like the, the most perfect testimony, is what happened this past week. So I'm trusting God financially, been trusting God financially for, for almost a year now, about 11 months. And I, three weeks ago, was praying. And I know that God supplies my needs, so I don't pray for my needs. I was just calling forth that the need that I had, which is $4,500. And as I was calling it in, the Lord spoke to me and said, call it 5,000 as a testament to me. He said, you're not gonna receive 4,500. He said, you're gonna receive a one lump sum of $5,000 and it will be a testimony to my power and my provision over your life. So I declared it, I claimed it and moved on. Two minutes later, it wasn't two minutes later after I said that, after I declared the 5,000, that the Lord spoke to me. He said, this will be the last time you receive provision in this way. He said, the brook is dry. You're going to Zarephath. Now, tomorrow, we're going to do an overview of 1 Kings 17, and I'm going to explain how all of this makes sense in the passage. But the point being that this is the seed, $5,000, and I started standing, believing it, because God said it. My prayer partner agreed, we believed, standing for what God said, because this will be the last time we receive this seed and then we're moving into our building. The next seed that's coming is millions. It's nothing short of millions. That's what's coming next because we are going into our building. And so I stood, I stood waiting, but then nothing was happening. There was no movement. It didn't seem like anybody was coming. Nobody, it seemed like the seed was waiting. And I just kept standing. I wouldn't go against my confession. I wouldn't say anything opposite other than God will supply what he said and what he promised. And then I had somebody give a little bit of money. Some tithes were coming in. Different people were sowing their tithe money. But it was just little bits here and there. It wasn't the, the thing God said. Somebody gave $500. I had a bill come forth for $500. Somebody sowed that $500. So that's $1,000 in one week. Somebody sows $300. Somebody sows $100. And then somebody sows $500 one night. So that's almost $2,000. You know, that's $1,900 that was sown. But it still was not that $5,000. Even if people sowed up to five grand, it wasn't the testimony of what God had spoken to me. So I wasn't receiving the, the fulfillment of that promise until I saw a full $5,000 at one time. But that $500 gets sowed and somebody told me, they said, pray, be, pray for the increase because God is about to show forth. He's about to fulfill it. And the very next morning, a, a, a good friend of mine, a partner with us, called me crying, praying in tongues and said, the Lord has spoken. And I'm going to give you $5,000 today. It's a pure testimony. God said, I will bring you five grand as a testament to my power. And that $5,000 showed up that very next day. We had almost $7,000 show up in the span of two weeks. But the 5,000 was the culmination of the testimony of God. And I want to tell you, it was nothing short of a miracle because that miracle, that sustainment, that provision right there is the last one we receive before we move into our building. And now we are entering in. We are moving to Zarephath right now. That's why we're having Testimony Tuesday. Because this is what's going to bring forth the millions that's going to allow us to pay for our building and enter into the fullness of what God is doing. I have even more testimonies of things God is doing behind the scenes ministry wise not even financially but just ministry wise hopefully i'll get to share those very soon but the reason why i share this testimony today the reason why we have testimony tuesday is for a couple reasons one if god 
will sustain me that way. If God will speak to me and say, I'm going to give you 5,000, and then God gives 5,000. My seed comes through a partner. If God will do that for me, God will do it for you. If God speaks promotion over your life, I declare right now that promotion will come forth in Jesus' name. God will open that door and no man will shut it. But the other reason why I give this testimony is what God was speaking to us last week. That if I will testify about what God is doing in my life, it will call you to partner. Because the people that have partnered with me, the people that have sowed this seed in the Blank Slate Ministries, the seed that they're sowing, they are receiving abundant provision. The supernatural sustainment of God that's on my life has came on their life because of their partnership. And I call you today, as Paul called the church, of, the church at Philippi, because of what the church of Corinth was doing, I call you to partner with us today. Because what God is doing in my life, God will do in your life if you will partner with us and enter into doing what we are doing and seeing the advancement of the gospel go forth. We're out of time today, so we're going to talk about this more tomorrow as we talk about the overview. But Father, bless these people in Jesus' name. I pray that the testimony I've given stirs the heart of everybody under my voice to walk in a spirit of obedience and partner with Blank Slate Ministries. God, let them know that if you've done it in my life, you will do it in their life. That your hand and your favor and your grace be upon them. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day today. Please make sure you're joining us tomorrow. We have a powerful lesson where we're going to overview the passage of 1 Kings 17. And if you're a part of our Divine Purpose curriculum, remember, class is tonight at 7 p.m. Church, I love you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. The sparrows not worried about tomorrow or oh, the troubles to come The lilies not thinking about the seasons The drought or the flood The tree that's planted by the water Isn't phased by the fire So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it cast. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Cause you take good care. Take good care of me You take good